So, but here's a really good story. And I don't think a lot of people know about this. So in 1981 to 83, there was a band called Hazy Fantasy. And I love this band. You worked in a re- record store. Did you even hear these guys? I, not that I'm aware of, no. They the were, name is not even familiar. They were like an avant-garde, like their, their songs were like in nursery rhyme. <laughs> And um, they were like John Wayne meets uh, Bob Marley. In- <laughs> like they were very, which makes sense because the guy later went, went well, off. Quite perfect sense. The guy later went into marketing and advertising, right? And he became a really good DJ. Um, and so Hazy Fantasy had a couple of good hits. I bought the album, by the way. Wow. I think mostly because I had a, I had a little low-key crush on Kate Garner, who was the woman, ah. um, who is now a famous photographer. Uh, see, they were all art people, and yeah. that was the era then, right? I mean, yeah. people were really, you know, adamant. You know, all those guys were about the look. Yeah. Um, I had the album. I loved it. They had a, a great song called Shiny Shiny, another co- one called John Wayne is Big Leggy. Honestly, I think there should be a Hazy Fantasy, uh, you know, comeback. So Jeremy Healy um, went into advertising. and He started doing, you know, music for ads. And so he had heard a white label record, and he that was really cool because it had a lot of samples on it and they were kind of, you know, just weird noises. I think he described it as a Star Wars cantina sound, <laughs> right? I mean, he took that and he sampled it and he put like strings over the top of it, right? In a dramatic fashion. And he used it for a British Airways ad. And so British Airways loved it. They loved the ad. And they, you know, sent it to the United States and it became a really big ad. And it was played like, you know how they play commercials before a movie? And they played oh, that, okay. right? And then just so happens the Beastie Boys were there. And they heard it. And they were like, what the f-? That's Cookie Puss. <laughs> smoking or non-smoking? British Airways has sampled Cookie Puss. And so the Beastie Boys contacted, they, you know, probably through Rick Rubin, right? They, they got an attorney who contacted British Airways and said, hey, you owe us, right? You used Cookie Puss and your British, <laughs> I'm sure British Airways love that. They're like, yeah. when the hell would you use a song called Cookie Puss? Um, and so uh, British Airways ended up settling for $40,000, which is about $118,000 today. Yeah. And so, but here's what's interesting. They used that money to buy an apartment in Chinatown. And that apartment in Chinatown became, right, their studio. It allowed them to have a place to rehearse and and allowed them to have a place to write. They also bought a TR-808. So they bought equipment with this $118,000, and that equipment became... They were also smarter than 99% of all (laughs) Right, because other musicians would have got high. Yeah. (laughs) They would have spent 117, right? Uh, But no, they went out and bought equipment. They essentially created a a rehearsal studio and a place to write, and they used the drum machine and the other equipment that they bought, not only for their, like, for the basis of their license to ill, but also they used it to do LL Cool J's I Need a Beat. So they were smart. And the fact that Jeremy Healy of Hazy Fantasy <laughs> used Cookie Puss yeah. as a sample essentially brought us to Beastie Boys. Yeah, I think they that's cr- my they, argument. And one, I think they said, hey, thanks. We would never have made it without you. So. <laughs> that's right. You know. By the way, little little side note on the whole Jeremy Healy. Hazy Fantasy thing. Can you tell I really loved Hazy Fantasy? Dude, I did. Anyway, they had dreadlocks. They are your typical British, you know, yeah. white kids, 22-year-old white kids with dreadlocks. Oh. And you're, so You're really selling them here, David. They went, he went to school with Boy George. Jeremy oh. Healy went to school. He knew he and Boy George hung out in high school. Boy George came up with Culture Club, right? And Jeremy Healy is like, what the hell, dude? You stole my look. Um, and Boy George famously said, it wasn't your look to steal. So I guess that means you don't have a copyright on the look. Hey, if you like what you hear, like and subscribe. It really means a lot, and we would love to have you coming back every week. Thank you.